Hey everyone, I wanted to do an informational video about infant cushions and car seats because this is something I hear misinformation about all the time and it's not really something that is black or white that we can make these huge blanket statements about. Effectively, if cushions came with your car seat, they are safe to use, um, but sometimes people hear that they should remove cushions and I want to give you a little bit of background on that, where that came from and why cushions are important. So um, basically a number of years ago, um, there was a statement issued by Transport Canada about head positioners. So head positioners being, if you've ever been to a baby store, I'm sure you have, where they have those, um, I like to call them rainbow head supports, where it was like a cushion that went around the child's head like this. Um, they were aftermarket products. They were made by a third party. They didn't come with a car seat. Those head supporter um, or head positioner products have been dangerous in a lot of cases. So what can happen is they can slip behind the head and um, put the child's airway in a position that's not safe for them, which we obviously don't want to do. And so Transport Canada issued a statement saying these products aren't regulated. Please don't use them. If it came with your car seat, it's safe. But if it didn't come with your car seat, please don't add it to your car seat. And a number of manufacturers, almost all of them, to be honest, have gone so far as to add statements in their manuals saying, hey, if something didn't come with your car seat, please don't use it because we haven't tested it with our car seat. We don't know how it would react in a crash or if it would be dangerous. So um, when that got boiled down to hospital policies, um, a lot of misinformation came out at this point where... Um, and this is no fault of the people that are working in the hospital, but what was happening was it got boiled down to a very simple message of cushions are bad, we should take them out of the car seat. And that is not a true blanket statement. If cushions came with your car seat, we should use them as specified in the user manual. So what I'm going to do here is show you a few user manuals, how they're worded and how to interpret that wording so that you can go to your own car seat, check out your your user manual and know exactly what that means. The job of the infant cushions is to make sure that the child is fitted properly to the seat when they're small. So um, for example, it's making sure that the crotch buckle is nice and snug up against the child in this case. What can happen is if we take this infant insert out too soon, we can create a dangerous gap here. I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I've gone ahead and removed that infant cushion. So now I'm going to find the baby's bum, put the baby's bum right into the back of the seat again. Now that I've done that, I have a huge gap here. So if you can see this, here's where the child's crotch is, here's where the buckle is. There's a huge gap in between there. And if I were to put this child in the seat right now, maybe drive a few minutes, they can slump down and potentially get themselves into a dangerous position. So that's why it's so important that we're using infant inserts as they are specified in the manual. So I want you to go back and look at your manual. I'm gonna show you what this manual says, what a few other manuals say, so that you can interpret your manual a little bit better. So here I am looking at the Nuna Pipa manual and there's a section on the infant insert. It reads, the infant insert can be used as necessary to provide a snug fit for small babies. The low birth weight pillow shown in green, which is this little section here, can be used in the infant insert for even smaller babies, but should be removed once unnecessary. The low birth weight pillow should be removed once a snug fit can be achieved without it at approximately 11 pounds. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like in this particular car seat here. If you happen to have a Nuna Pipa seat and you're like, where the heck is that cushion? It's not on the front, it's on the back. So when you open up the back of the cushion, there's this other thing that comes out of a Velcro pouch, that's the low birth weight cushion. So if you were wondering what that was, that's what it looks like. So to interpret that back to this seat here, okay, so this particular cushion didn't have a rule around it. The low birth weight pillow, that pillow I just showed you in the back, it said that it was recommended to take it out around 11 pounds, but basically when you find that all they need is the gray cushion and they don't actually need that low birth weight pillow anymore. So if you can get a snug fit with just the gray cushion around 11 pounds, then that's totally fine. 
So snug fit being, does the child fit nicely up against the crotch buckle? We don't want them sitting on top of it either, but do they nicely fit up against it? We don't see like a huge gap between their crotch and the crotch buckle. So um, again, no heavy rule on this one. So we could continue using this basically until we find that it is interfering with them being fit properly in the seat. So if they start to sit on top of the crotch buckle, um, the harness gets difficult to tighten, things like that, then you can think about removing this cushion. I want to show you two more manuals and I have picked two car seats that are particularly popular in the area that I live. Those car seats are the Appa Baby Mesa and the Kiko Keyfit. The reason I have picked these two manuals is because these two seats have very different wording around their infant insert use. So one has very light wording in that it's very flexible with how the infant insert can be used and where it can be removed. And one has very strong wording about when it needs to come out. So I hope that these two examples will help illustrate for you what you're looking for when you're reading your manual so that when you look at your own manual, if it's different from any of these three seats that I'm showing you, that you can go back and interpret your manual correctly. So if you have questions though, please DM me, but I'm gonna show you two more manuals now. Okay, so I'm currently looking at the Appa Baby Mesa manual, and here I have found a section on the infant insert. Now, they have what I like to call light wording around their infant insert. So it says, to ensure a better fit for smaller infants, we recommend using the infant insert between four and eight pounds. So what I'd like to point out there is the wording recommend using. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to come out at eight pounds, um, and it could potentially even come out sooner. All children are shaped differently. All children carry their weight in different places. So if this, if you were to take this out um, either at or before eight pounds, and you found that there was still a fit issue, meaning that the child doesn't fit nicely up against the crotch buckle, then you would want to put that back in until they meet that fit requirement. So that is an example of what I like to refer to as light wording. So here's an example of the Kiko Key Fit manual. And in this manual, I brought you first to this page. It's about the head support. So the head support is just that pillow that goes behind the infant's head in this particular seat. And what I want to point out here is that it says the head support can be used with or without the newborn insert. So they don't have to be sort of an all or nothing thing. We can use the head support even if we remove the infant support. If I go up a page here, you'll see that there is a whole section on the newborn insert. And it states that um, you only use insert with infants who weigh between four and 11 pounds. Never use the insert if an infant weighs more than 11 pounds. So that is an example of what I will refer to as strong wording. That is very, very firm that um, once they hit 11 pounds, it has to be removed. So, um, so that's an example of where there isn't any sort of um, give in their wording. One more thing I want to touch on before I wrap this video up is the manufacturer is the expert on their car seat, and I cannot emphasize this enough. If the manufacturer tells you something in your manual, it's there for a reason. They are the people that have designed and crash tested that car seat. So we always want to follow their advice. And when in doubt, if you get in a situation where you're like, you know what, I just really don't know how to interpret this, or I have a weird situation going on with my car seat, from the manufacturer, they will be able to give you a clear answer on what you know is going to be the correct thing to do in your particular situation. So when in doubt, ask a manufacturer, but that's why it is so important that we're following the rules of the manual and that's why I wanted to help you learn how to read these manuals more effectively. I hope that helps. I hope that answers some of your questions about infant inserts. The bottom line here is please make sure you are using your inserts as they are specified in the car seats manual. If you don't have the manual for your car seat, please go back to the manufacturer for your car seat and request a copy of your manual. Sometimes even with the same car seat, so for example, with an Upper Baby Mesa or Nuna Pipa, from year to year, there could be changes in the manual. And so you wanna make sure that you are getting the manual that is specific to your car seat for the year it was manufactured. So when in doubt, you can always go right back to the manufacturer and request a copy. They will either send you a PDF or you may even get a print copy depending on what they have available. 
Um, but it's so, so, so important that you are reading the accurate manual, that you're reading the Canadian manual when you're in Canada, et cetera, et cetera. So always double check your manual. But I hope now that gives you some tools to properly interpret what you're reading. If you have questions, I'm always here for your questions. Please feel free to send me a message.